Well, today we are sitting down with someone I'm very excited to talk to, JV and Elliot. I mean, you have had the most incredible story, and we're going to get into that in, in just a little bit. But I want to start things off by asking you, when you were playing at Rutherford, did you ever expect to go to the NFL? It was always a dream of mine, but you know, being from a small city, not very, not too many people making it, you know, it was kind of seen far-fetched, but you know, once I realized that I could do it, it was, it was just a goal of mine that I wanted to take down. So let's talk a little bit about your story because I think that's what people look up to and are inspired by, especially in this area, especially at Rutherford, those football players love your story. You know, you were mostly unrecruited out of high school then you walked on to FSU. Then you made your way into getting some playing time and quite a bit in your senior season. Then you were undrafted, but then were able to make it to the NFL and get playing time in the NFL. What kept you going through all of that? Well, you know, I just put my dreams before God, you know, and uh, just always working to strive to get better. You know, that's, you know, it's deeper than football. That football is my passion, but you know, it's just something about a day-to-day -day thing where you just realize that you're getting better and better and you look back and you realize how far you came. And uh, that's, that's just what kept me going, you know, working hard and, you know. Yeah, and especially, I think, in the NFL, people don't realize what it's actually like. What, what in your best, I guess, in your best couple of sentences, what's the NFL really like? The NFL is a business where, you know, you can't get comfortable. You know, um, it's you just got to bring your A game every day. You're amongst the best athletes in the world, the best football players in the world. And uh, it's a blessing to be there, you know, but it's also a better feeling to know that you can conquer something like that. That's awesome. And I, I want to ask you this, too. You know, you started at Tampa Bay for a couple of seasons. Now, new team, Carolina Panthers. What are you most excited for? with this new team? Well, I've been in Florida my whole life. You know, I grew up in Panama City, went to Florida State, played football at Tampa. So, you know, definitely being in a new city, a new state, um, new culture, you know, so uh, I'm just ready to go out there and have fun. You know, it's a business trip for me, so I'm ready to go out there and just uh, prove myself. Is there someone you're most excited to play with? Uh, man, they have so many great players over there, you know, definitely. You know, Luke Kuechly, of course, as far as the mental part of the game. And then you got, you know, Cam, you got Dante Jackson. You got, man, there's so many people over there. Like, you know, I'm ready. I'm just ready to go out there and play, ready to go out there and show myself. When do you report to camp? The 24th, next week. Wow. Yep. So coming here and doing this camp was kind of quick, right? It was a little bit of a quick turnaround for right. you. Yeah, it was. It, what, what kind of brought you to doing this fun day? I know, I know it was, you know, announced kind of just a month ago. What, what were your thoughts and, and everything on doing that? Well, it's always something that I wanted to do, you know, as, as far as a fun day go, you know, with the hurricane and everything, I didn't want it to be focused on football. You know, I wanted to mainly put smiles on people's faces. So, you know, I just wanted to put a little twist to it and, uh, you know, bring life to the city and, you know, just let people let their hair down and have fun. What do you think people don't know about running your own fun day or camp, as, as you would say? What do you think you would tell people if they want to run their own camp? What have been some difficulties that you faced? Uh, it's, it's actually, it's actually it's difficulties in everything you do. But, you know, I just appreciate the support from my city, uh, support from my family and God, of course. And, uh, you know, just everything's been going pretty cool. But, you know, uh, definitely the support of my city, I appreciate them for that. Let's talk a little bit about the hurricane. I feel like I know people have talked to you about it before, especially because you're from this area. But what was it like to be in the middle of the season and have that news that, hey, there's a Cat 5 hurricane coming towards your hometown? What was that like for you? Well, at first, you know, growing up, you, you go through many hurricanes. You know, they, you get days off from school and nothing really big happens. But, uh, you know, this time it was just kind of the same thing. But then once it, once I realized how serious it was, the toughest part was not being able to hear from my family, you know, with the phone services being down and all that thing and all that. But, uh, 
you know, not being able to see or get in touch with my people was the hardest thing. And then just seeing the aftermath of everything, you know, all the all the landmarks, every whether it was gas stations, churches, schools, like everything that I grew up seeing was just no longer there. And that was that was really tough. When did you get to see the damage? When were you able to see it? Um, I think I came in January, right after the season. Yeah, I think I came right after the season. What was the hardest thing to see here? What was there something that you saw that you're like that that really touched you? And like every corner that I hit, like it was like I said, whether you know, even my grandma's house, what like churches, schools everything like all the trees were down like you can't even really tell what street is what because you know you were able to not even see a street sign and be able to turn on that street because you know by the landmarks but those landmarks aren't even there anymore so it's kind of tough but, yeah. was did you have a favorite place that got ruined uh my grandma's house of course yeah that's that's really sweet um something that I think has been a big talk with Hurricane Michael is the NFL's lack of response and the NFL's just just not even really giving as much. There's been a lot of players in past hurricanes that have given given back and obviously you're doing that as well. Uh, what do you kind of think about that um, in terms of you're playing the NFL and they didn't really have a response to something this big? Well, I know Tampa helped out as much as they could um, because I was on that team. And, uh, you know, as far as other teams, I can't really speak for it, but Panama City is a small town, you know, so while it happens, you know, it's going to be the talk of the week or whatever. But once it blows over, you know, it's not a big city like when New Orleans got hit or Houston got hit. So, you know, it's not really many NFL players or, you know, any coming from Panama City either. So that might have something to do with it. It might be it might just be like they're unaware of you know once all the smoke clears but that that might just be what it is i don't think they're just brushing it off like oh we don't care about panama city i think it's just an awareness standpoint yeah i do i i feel like that's a good point because we need to bring awareness you know things like this and and you've been doing that you know you by doing a fun day for kids here and giving back to the community you're kind of showing that awareness that hey we're trying to help we're trying to do something good um was that kind of a draw for you? You've always wanted to give back. I know you've been giving back. Even at FSU, you gave back. With the community here, especially in this time right now, was that a driving force to do something like this? Yeah, it definitely was. You know, like I said, I always wanted to do something for the kids, whether it was a football camp, you know, school giveaway, something, you know, and it just dawned on me, like, you know, this is the perfect time. And, uh, whether it was in my career and after the hurricane, you know, I feel like this was the, you know, this was the best time to do something. And I didn't want to let this year go by without doing anything. That's awesome. And, you know, J-Rob um, at FSU did a camp, I don't know, maybe a couple of weeks ago, had a bunch of FSU guys come and help him out with that. Um, I feel like he was saying that he was so excited that you were doing something too, because yeah. he's like, this is just great. It shows what kind of bond that th these FSU guys have yeah. um, and that we all want to give back and we want to give back to our community. Do you feel like that's kind of awesome that you hear that some of the other guys are also giving back and doing what you're doing as well. Yeah, it does. And I, I really took my hat off to him because, you know, he has he has his own thing going on at Florida State. You know, me, I, I have an off season, so I have plenty of time off. You know, him, he's doing his summer grind. He got school. He got football to worry about, you know. But so it meant a lot for him to take time out of his schedule to come back and bring other people with him. So that was that was awesome. That's awesome. Okay, so now we've got all the hard questions out of the way. We're going to do kind of a rapid fire round. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, cool. So I'm going to kind of ask you some questions kind of Panama City Center, if that's okay. And we're just kind of going to go, right? So I, maybe I'll ask you why you said something, but I, I just kind of wanted you to go from the tip of your tongue, okay? Okay. All right, cool. So your favorite hangout in Panama City? Oh, man. Rocket lands. <laughs> really? Yeah. Why? Or the Why beach, rocket or the lanes? beach. Uh, you know, it's, it's you go bowl and hang out with friends, family. You know, there's not much to do here, so. Yeah, that's true. Uh, favorite place to eat? Oh man, favorite place to eat that's open? I mean, I guess you can <laughs> say if it closed. If it closed, if you had a favorite place to eat that closed, that's fine too. My grandma's kitchen. Oh, really? <laughs> 
Yeah, that's the best food. Can can I can I have some of your grandma's food? What you, you ate soul food before? Well, no, I have never had it. You never had soul food? Is it is it like a, like Louisiana flair? Like, no. It's like a Panama City flair. Well, I need to have some of this. You need to get your grandma. We need to have some of this soul food. I I'm really excited about that. Okay, um, who did you hate facing in high school? Who did I hate? Yeah. Nobody. You didn't have you didn't have a super big rivalry with someone else. I feel like I feel like rivalries made it more fun. Yeah, it, so you had a rivalry so with them. I really I loved playing against Mosley. I loved playing against Bay. Okay. You know because it brought the city out. You know I didn't hate playing against anybody. Okay. You know, but I really loved those bigger moment games though. Gotcha. So so it really there was never any there was never any oof we're playing them tonight. I'm a little nervous. Never. <laughs> You, you were always like, yeah, we're playing Mosley, we're playing Bay, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's embrace good. Embrace it. You got to embrace it. Well, who'd you enjoy playing with at FSU? At FSU? Yeah. As far as players go? Yes. Man, we got Darby, PJ Williams, Jameis, Marquez White. <laughs> uh, man, we was deep. Like, it was a lot. Those were, those were like some of my closest friends, but it was, it was great to be able to play with Dalvin Cook, you know, um, and it was the list can go on. Ter- Terrence Smith, Reggie Northwood. It's a lot of people that, you know, it's a brotherhood there. You know? So, 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 yeah. so if you had to pick your favorite guy to play against, you couldn't do it. To play against? Yeah. Uh, I'm really competitive. You know, Jameis talks a lot of trash, so you know, it brings <laughs> the, it brings the competitive out of me. So yeah. that's good. Well, uh, who's the funniest guy that you Dar- played with? Darby. Really? Why? 100. percent He's a clown. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a moment that you can think of? Man, when is there not a moment? <laughs> <laughs> I wish, I wish, I feel like that's a locker room moment where he's he's yeah. just doing something that's Everywhere, nuts. Everywhere, outside the locker room, anywhere you go, he's just going to bring everybody. You can't, there's no way you can be around him and not laugh. I love that. All right, favorite coach? At Florida State. Uh, at Florida State, it can be anywhere. It can be here, it can be so I have, NFL. Um. At Florida State, my favorite coach was Coach Kelly. Okay. Uh, in Panama City, it had nothing to do with football, but Coach Brown. Uh, well, yeah, she was a basketball coach at uh, Boys and Girls Club. She was definitely my favorite coach. Why, why was she your favorite? She, we just had, I don't know, she was just really cool, you know. She was just, she was just my, that's just my favorite coach as did, far as did, sports coach. Did she ever coach you or did she ever no, help she you coached, out? She coached me. We was at the Boys and Girls Club, you know. We just had that cool relationship where... You know, you just can't explain as far as, you know, teach me the game. You know, it was, it's, it's different when you have a female basketball coach, but I just appreciate her because, you know, I was young and she gave me a chance so since I was, she was my coach literally from when I was like seven, really like five to like middle school. So. Did you play basketball a lot? Yeah, I did. Wow. Yeah. What, what, what was the drive to go to football rather than basketball? I've been playing football since I could pretty much walk. <laughs> <laughs> so that was more of, more of the push there yeah. rather than it, you could have had a career in basketball. You never know. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> that was my next question, though. Uh, favorite sports team that's not football? That's not football? Yeah. Oh, man. Hmm. What's the team on Space Jam? I forgot their name. <laughs> Wait, do you like the monsters? Uh, no, or do like you like the Bugs Bunny team? Yeah, that team. I think they were called the Space Jam team. I'm not sure. Someone yeah. can correct me on that, but I yeah. feel like they were called. Yeah. Or no, they were called the Looney Tunes, right? Weren't they called? Yeah, the Looney Tunes. Yeah. So you like the Looney Tunes team? Yeah. I don't know. My, my dad would disagree with you on that. He likes the monsters too, just because of the star power. There. Yeah. <laughs> just because of all the, I, the I stars like, that they took the talent from. I like the underdogs. Like, all right, all right. I can yeah. see that. Well, they did have MJ. So they, were they really underdogs? Uh, yeah, that's true. It's, they, they did got, have MJ. They got LeBron in the next one. Exactly. So are you excited for the new Space Jam then? Yeah, I am. <laughs> is, that your, is that your favorite movie? My favorite movie? When I was a kid, it was. Okay. Uh, What's your favorite movie now then? My favorite movie now. Um, I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but I'm starting to get into like the superhero thing. Oh. When I was growing up, I hated superhero. Like, I wasn't, you know, I probably watched like Power Rangers or something, but <laughs> I, I don't really think you can count in. them technically as superheroes. Yeah, but I'm. It's just something I'm starting to get into as I'm getting older. Okay, so superhero you most identify with. That I most what? That you most identify with. 
man, I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I'm, st- I'm watching the movies and I don't really know how the people names, but I'm still learning. Well, what about like basic ones? The uh, Iron Man, Spider Man. I ain't gonna lie. I, ain't gonna lie. Um, uh, I forgot their names. Which which uh, one? Oh man! In the Avengers, the one with Iron Groot and all them. Like, the Avengers. <laughs> they're funny. The little raccoon. I oh, forgot the, his name. Oh, you mean Guardians of the Galaxy? Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. Yeah. Just because so, they're funny though, like. Oh yeah. So you identify sure. with the raccoon? The com- the com- the comedian side of him. <laughs> yes, I like that. <laughs> I'm gonna say that you most identify with Rocket in Guardians of the Galaxy. That's his name, Rocket. You're Rocket. I th- Look, nah, I'm not good on lie. superheroes either, so you're, yeah. you're, you're testing my knowledge now. So yeah, yeah. thanks so much, Javion. We really right. appreciate it. No problem. Appreciate you guys. Cool.